Welcome to DIY Solar and Wind. I'm at the Air Zoo. This is the third video. And our guest is Kevin. Take it away, Kevin. He's done it to me again. He's hooked me into another one. Hey, welcome again. We're standing in front of the museum's Douglas SVD Dauntless Dive Bomber. Uh, this particular aircraft was recovered out of Lake Michigan back in 1993, and we'll get to why that was in Lake Michigan a little bit later. But Dauntlesses were used by the Navy and the Marines from the start of World War II and actually were used all the way through the war as a dive bomber. So their method of attack is to go into a very steep dive at about a 70 degree uh, angle and they get down to about 2,000 feet and they'll release a bomb that's slung under the belly of the aircraft. That'll be the major impact of the attack. Sometimes they'll have bombs on outboard on the wings as well. And they were very, very effective as a dive bomber. Uh, in the Battle of Midway, which was June 4th, 5th, and 6th, 1942, Dauntlesses, of course, with the bravery of their crews, will sink four Japanese aircraft carriers. And they'll go on to sink two other aircraft carriers in World War II, and no other naval aircraft can make that claim. They also participated in all five major aircraft carrier engagements in World War II. And again, no other naval aircraft can make that claim. So Dauntlesses were really quite an important aircraft for the Navy and the Marines during the war. Uh, this particular Dauntless is a very, very rare one, and that's because the aircraft you're looking at was used in Operation Torch, the invasion of North Africa. When it was recovered from Lake Michigan, they noticed a yellow band, and if we kind of shoot underneath the wing here, you can see a yellow band around the insignia. Well, that was hard to see when we got it, but they were able to figure out that this aircraft had been used in North Africa. And so that makes it very rare because the vast majority of Dauntlesses were used in the Pacific. But it's even more rare because we could link it to an actual operation, Operation Torch, the invasion of North Africa. This was being flown off the USS Ranger. It was involved in attacks on Vichy French ships, including the battleship the Jean Bart, and we believe this aircraft succeeded in actually hitting the Jean Bart with one of its bombs. So we have a real combat veteran, a very, very rare aircraft. If we come down to the picture down below here, this is a picture of the Dauntless after it came out of Lake Michigan. It was complete. However, they removed the wings to uh, get it on a truck to get it here to Kalamazoo. And look what happens after 50 years. If you can see where my red light is pointing at, after 50 years, it's still dripped oil. Quite amazing. Now the aircraft went under about a 10 year restoration here at the Air Zoo, a lot of volunteer hours, to get it in the condition that you see now. And it's around 80% original. It's amazing. And what we'll do is we'll go around the side and then towards the back and give you some views of it in different angles. The aircraft has a crew of two. You have the pilot and then you have the rear gunner who also navigates, and in a little bit we'll see those positions a little clearer. I want to point out the Tuskegee Airmen, <laughs> since they're right here, they had an amazing job and they had a, they had a tough time. They're amazing. As you come around the back of the aircraft, you get a nice view of it. You see the forward cockpit where the pilot sits. Might be a little hard to see, but if we focus in on that front cockpit, you'll see right in the middle, just above the dash, going through the windscreen is actually a telescope. It's a low-powered telescope. And that's basically what the pilot uses to aim the aircraft in those very steep dives. Oh, wow. He also operates two forward-firing machine guns. And then in the back where the rear gunner and navigator sits, he operates two 30 caliber machine guns that are on a swivel mount. Those guns are able to be tucked away, by the way. There's little doors that will open. The guns can be tucked down into the fuselage of the aircraft. Then the canopy pulled over the rear position to keep him under shelter if he's in bad weather or it's cold out. Otherwise, those 
positions are wide open and he's manning the gun for protection from the rear. Another feature of the Dauntless that is kind of interesting is because this goes into a very steep dive, you need to control the aircraft in that dive. Uh, nickname for the Dauntless was Slow But Deadly. Remember, SBD, Slow But Deadly. Uh, the SBD official designation is Scout, Bomber, and Douglas, Douglas being the manufacturer. But again, the nickname Slow But Deadly. Even in a dive, these aircraft only get up to about 275 miles an hour. And part of what they're doing with these flaps is controlling it and keeping the aircraft steady so that he can accurately aim the aircraft. So when they roll themselves over into that steep dive, these dive flaps will open. So this one will come up, the other one goes down, and that will help keep the aircraft stable and under control in that dive. The reason for the holes is because in early testing, these were solid. And they realized when they put it into a steep dive and they were solid, that would deflect the air so bad that the tail surfaces were not operating correctly because it more or less diverted too much air and it wouldn't pass over the tail surfaces. So they needed to allow a certain amount of air to pass through to be able to control the tail surfaces. That's the reason for all the holes and the flaps, and that's really the only reason for that. But it is a very identifiable and unique feature of the aircraft. It's something, of course, we don't think about when we look at it. We realize what they're for. It's interesting. Yeah, and another thing about Dauntless is the wings do not fold on these. Many aircraft that are used on carriers, naval aircraft, you'll see the wings will fold in some way, shape, or form. These don't fold. Douglas decided rather than fold the wings and create all that additional mechanisms and weight, they would instead create short, very stubby, broad wings, thereby allowing the aircraft to fly decently, but not having to fold the wings. So that, too, is a little bit different about a Douglas. And then again, you'll see the markings on the aircraft. I talked about the yellow band designates that it's being used in North Africa. This would be an Allied aircraft being used in North Africa. And that's what clued the Air Zoo in when we initially got it. Of course, the paint was really, really degraded, but we could see a faint yellow outline around the star, and that began to raise questions. Why does this aircraft have that? And of course, as time went on, we were able to figure it out. This is a real combat vessel. So very rare aircraft here at the Air Zoo. Um, you won't see another one that served on the Ranger in World War II like this. So with that, I'll end it. Back to you. All right. I'm so impressed. Kevin is a great speaker. Thank you. Wow. And again, Kalamazoo Air Museum, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Lower Michigan. Maybe I'll meet some of the YouTubers down here sometime in the summer. And have a nice sunny day.